everything's so wet, man. I'm literally standing in a swimming pool. <laughs> okay. Let me know when to rock and roll. Right, guys, welcome to Tasty Business. Lovely uh, sunny day here, so I thought we'd do some barbecue. Today we're gonna to be doing a grilled boneless chicken with salsa verde, and the chicken's gonna be brined, uh, salsa verde's gonna be zingy, and we're cooking it on the barbecue, and I'm gonna show you how to cook perfect chicken, so let's get cracking. Chicken deboning, sounds difficult, it's not, I'm gonna show you how. First up, obviously really important, get yourself a very good quality chicken from the butchers or farmers markets, don't go cheap on this. You will be rewarded in flavor and texture. So to bone out a chicken, you're gonna take out the wishbone first. So you just peel back the breast skin. You just go in with the knife and just very close to the wishbone here and just run alongside. You can feel the wishbone with your finger and you just come in here and you just take it off, clip it at the bottom, clip it there. And that's the wishbone coming off. Keep that to the side. All the carcass and everything, all the bones we're gonna use for stock, so keep every bone. Then we flip the bird over. So this is the backbone here. So you need to run the knife straight down the backbone. And we're gonna follow the carcass round. And then you start going all the way around the back. And you've got this leg joint which you pop out. So, and then the knife goes in there and just around. You've now got the leg separated. So now what we wanna work on is the breast. So everything we've got here. And then you go through, through the wing, okay? So we're, so we're getting there. So you can see we've almost got half the chicken done. That's where taking the wishbone off is such a great bonus because here you would have met the wishbone. Just be careful here because we are aiming to take it off in whole. If, you, if you're too gung-ho, then you're gonna go straight through the skin on the bottom side. We need to keep it all intact all the way to there. So we're just gonna just be very careful until we meet the skin. Flip the bird over. And then we got the leg here. So we're gonna get through so that's the wing, that's the wing bone here. So we're just gonna make sure we find that and, and put the knife through that joint. And then this last bit to come off is just the leg. So you've, you've got the carcass, you can see on this side, legs come off, carcass here. You can just pop that joint out and now it's an easy process just to get in behind that chicken oyster, come round and just whip the rest of that leg off. So that's the carcass which we are gonna reserve for, for stock. Whip the wings off, we're gonna go in and take the bones out of the legs. So you just wanna run the knife down each bone and then down this leg here. You kinda wanna just use the tip of the knife just to be going either side of the bone. And once you get either side of the bone and you can come out the bottom here, you can just do that. And then you lift up the leg and you just scrape down. You just need to be a little bit gentle here, going round the going around the cartilage, and then you basically repeat the same from the other side of this, uh, other side of this thigh bone. You run the knife either side. It does take a little bit of time, but it is, it is rewarding. So the only bit we're leaving on is the first, the first wing joint. So yeah, just wrap that up, put that on your tray. That's a bonus chicken. Now we're gonna, we're gonna brine it. This is just gonna elevate um, the finished product so much. The brine, because it's a salt, salt and water solution, and it breaks down the chicken, making it tender. It also imparts salt in inside the chicken, so it's gonna be seasoned all the way through. So this is gonna take about three hours to brine in a 10% brine. So go with a litre of water and then 100 grams of salt. That is 10%. And you just whisk that until the salt is all dissolved. We're just gonna drop the chicken in there. Make sure it's submerged. Leave that there. Three hours in the fridge. That's gonna take it to one above where you're going now. So I'm gonna to go to the fridge. Three important things you need to light a barbecue. Eco fire lighters, fire, and good quality charcoal. Really worth investing in good stuff. This is high grade lump wood charcoal. This is actually home oak charcoal. And you know, charcoal doesn't go off, so buy a big bag and you just keep it outside. You're actually gonna get a nice smoke when the fat drips on the, 
on the charcoal creates those nice plumes of smoke. Buy good quality charcoal. Uh, thank me later. It's always good to light a barbecue in the rain. You want to just make a little base for the charcoal. Big lumpy bits. And we're just going to chuck a few, few fire lighters in. You want to layer up your layer up the charcoal. Don't just like tip it all on. We can light that up. Um, obviously you don't need a blowtorch, but actually pretty useful thing to have in the kitchen. Keep layering up the charcoal. And just leave it to do its own thing. Eco fire lighters is just beeswax and uh, really thin strips of wood. Um, I don't know why you need to go and like buy like a petrol chemical thing wrapped in plastic. By not pouring it on and by using big thick pieces of charcoal, flames are going to be able to wrap around the coal and it's just going to get going nice and quickly. You can tell it's good quality, it already smells like, it smells like wood. Salsa Verde, basically chopped herbs, seasoned with olive oil, capers, Dijon mustard, bit of garlic, some salt, lemon zest, lemon juice, really simple. Um, herbs of choice, parsley, integral, basil, nice and soft, sweet and mint, you know, minty. <laughs> you can do it in a food processor, but we're gonna, we're gonna hand chop, you get, a nice, you get a real nice texture from that. So first up, you, all you gotta do is you just gotta pick down all the herbs. It's probably two to one parsley to the rest of the herbs. Yeah, we're not looking for too much stalk. Keep them separate at this stage because you're gonna chop them slightly differently. Parsley, we're gonna need to run the knife through. The basil, we're just gonna, we're gonna sort of chiffonade and then chiffonade, which is like a fine, fine slice. This is where the music can be playing. Chopping herbs is a, a, is a, is a, is a skill. And you know, it's one of the first skills you learn in the kitchen. It's a good way to tell a good chef. Doing the basics right, and then everything else will slot into place. Now for the fun part, knife selection. So with the parsley, take it out like that, and you just roll it up. So that just enables you to have a good grip of it. So we're just gonna get the knife and you're just gonna... First chop should be as fine as possible. And just keep tucking those herbs back in. If you don't get that first chop thin, you're gonna have to keep running the knife through a lot to get the, to get the consistency of the herbs you want. You see how the, the parsley's still green. It's not black, it's not bruised, and that's how you know you've chopped a nice herb. Next up, we'll do the basil. This is gonna make the dish sing. It's gonna be green, it's gonna be vibrant. You've got chopped basil. Going in with your parsley. Same with the mint. Give it a nice little roll up. Then you can, and you can just get it as thin as possible again. Same again. We'll just go through that once. Bosh. You'd be thinking, shit, I've never seen a lemon like that. That is an Amalfi lemon. Well worth buying. So into here, we'll chop the capers. Gonna go about two spoons of capers. Just chop those up. These are gonna give like a beautiful, salty, tang to the salsa verde. Salsa verde can change so much. You can have like, some people put shallots in there, some people put different types of vinegars. I mean, the consistent thing is that it's a green herb, herb sauce. Right now we'll go in with the garlic. This is actually a new season. We're just gonna go one clove. So this, this new season stuff's not quite as pungent as the dried stuff, obviously dry it intensifies. With the garlic, you can either chop it, finely chop it. If you haven't got a microplane, these are like so useful because that's essentially what you're gonna get from a finely chopped, chopped clove, it just basically minces it. There we go, so you got your minced garlic, straight in. Lemon zest. Don't know why I'm doing it like that, because this is always the way to do it. Someone once showed me to actually run the microplane around the lemon, it means you just get all of the zest off. Top tip, so lemon zest in, then we'll squeeze the juice of one lemon. Ooh. So I suppose that the main thing with this is its preference, your taste. How much garlic do you want? How much salt do you want? Just taste it all the time. Dijon, lemon juice, olive oil. Okay, so mustard. I go like a teaspoon. Lemon juice, I'm gonna go in with all of that lemon because I want it quite acidic. I'm not going to see, put any salt in it until I've tasted it. Olive oil, I'm going to put enough just to bind it. So we're going to see that 
definitely needs more oil. You can use your eyes, okay? So, olive oil. So that's what we're looking for, it, just to be bound. That's why I mentioned before, bound with olive oil. Okay, so. Lovely, acidic, salty, garlicky. Gonna go with like a small pinch of salt. Perfect, done. Just gonna bosh that in there. Yeah, it's such, it's so versatile. But if you can make a good one, you're laughing. Charcoal is getting, getting close. It's, it's all white on the edges. You just want to bash it down. Um, so it's one even layer. Charcoal's uh, still raging hot. Uh, too hot to cook the chicken. We'll put the, um, put the grill on just to burn off all of the crap that's on there from the last time we used it. Chicken's been in the brine for three hours. Just gonna lift that up. Just gonna lie it flat on a tea towel. You can see where it's like the salt has like been curing it. Pat that real dry. At this stage, you can then go and put it in the fridge and just let the skin dry out. Make sure before we put it on the grill, we've got really dry skin. First, this is another little power move when you're cooking meat is uh, you make an infused brown butter with garlic and some rosemary. And this is, this, is gonna, this is gonna form the resting platform for your chicken when you take it off the barbecue. I'm gonna go like 100, that's 125 grams of butter. When it's getting brown, I'm just gonna crunch in a couple of cloves of garlic and then from my rosemary bush over here, take a couple of sticks of rosemary. So we're just gonna, so that's gonna burn out brown. It's gonna be super quick, it's gonna take a minute or so. Crush the garlic. So basically, now the charcoal is getting to where it is, is where it wants to be. The butter's taking a little bit of time just to, just to start foaming. That's a good indication that we are, like if it was super hot, that tray would already be burning the butter. And I can hold my hand there comfortably for like five, six seconds. And that's what we want because we want that skin to get super crispy. Then we'll just leave it to rest in this butter. So at this stage, I'll add in the rosemary. It's gonna start crackling. And that is so aromatic. Tasty business. Let's see it's starting to turn color. We're gonna sit the chicken right in there. And that is just gonna like, it's gonna release all of its resting juices into the butter. And that's gonna make a nice emulsion with that. And we're gonna spoon that over the chicken along with the salsa verde. Barbecue is literally perfect. You can see the coals are, um, Gray, it's a nice heat that. So I'm just gonna get a bit of oil on the towel and rub it on the grill. That's just gonna give a little layer of oil between the metal and then when you put the when you put the chicken on. How do you get really dry chicken in the rain? That's the question. We're gonna put a really thin layer of oil over it. If the skin's wet and you put it straight onto a onto a grill, it's just going to it's gonna stick. That moisture is gonna stick straight to the straight to the grill. And then we're gonna put it on one movement, okay? Legs down, now don't touch it. You just let that crisp up. And when it's crispy, we're just gonna be able to pick it up by these wings and we're just gonna be able to flip it nicely. We are going for crispy skin, not burnt skin. Comprende? Start cooking the chicken through, then we're gonna flip it, put it in the brown butter, carve it up, Bob's your uncle, and this thing is your aunt. We've got a beautiful char on the skin, it's crispy. That did not stick at all, do you see that? I'm gonna leave it to cook the rest of the way through. So we've been cooking on the flesh side for like seven minutes. We're gonna give it one last uh, turn. Before we do that, I'm just gonna give it Give the skin a nice brush with the brown butter. And that's just gonna super crisp up. So just give it a nice turn, just cause it's cooking slowly. Be careful when you turn that. Turn it one last time. Brush that as well. Only takes about 30 seconds on that side. And now what we'll do is just lift up that chicken nicely. Chicken straight into the brown butter. I'll just put that back on there, bring it up to a little bit of temperature, then I'll just move it to the side. So in this tray, this chicken's just gonna rest for like five minutes, just for it to relax. All the juices stay inside. It's gonna hold all that moisture when we carve it. Yeah. 
chicken is now ready. Let's lift that chicken out onto the board. Okay. Beautiful, boneless chicken. You're gonna come straight down the middle. Oh, did you hear that crispiness? And then you're just gonna, between the chicken and the, and the thigh, this would be ideal on like a, you know, family style barbecue. Perfectly cooked. So you've got all these resting juices as well. So that is like pure flavor. So you've got butter, you've got the resting juices. See how it adds a lovely sheen to all that crispy skin. And then the power, salsa verde. Maybe we'll just finish a little bit of salt. There you've got it. Boneless chicken with a beautiful salsa verde, some burnt butter. Tuck in. God, your mates would be happy with that. Beautiful on a wet day. And there's lots of stuff you can do with it, all the sides. I'm just gonna have to pair this with a simple green salad, butter leaf lettuce with a French dressing. I don't know, I'm gonna go in for a bit of thigh. Just try that straight up out of the... Mm. Cook perfectly. Crispy skin, nice and slow. The flavor is so well rounded. We're not rewriting the script here. This is simple ingredients. Great quality chicken, lovely herbs, prepared with love and a little bit of skill, you know? Like home cooking, cooking on a barbecue, really respecting the ingredients. It's considered cooking and that's what it's all about. It's tasty business.